listening to Hope in the Night. I'm Miss Patricia, your host for this evening, and this is CMV TV. I'm glad you're joining me tonight. My voice sounds a little bit funny. It's because I'm battling a little bit of a cold, and I was going to cancel tonight because I was feeling sick, but I asked some of the brothers and sisters to pray, and they prayed. And I felt my strength coming back to the point where I can deliver this message. And I know it's from God. I know it's from the Most High Elohim. That's God in Hebrew. He wants to encourage you tonight. He wants to let you know that just because you're going through some tough times in your life, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. See, in the church... They tell you that if you're not rich, and if you're not feeling fantastic 24-7, and if you don't have everything you speak and declare, you must not know God. You don't have enough faith. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that that's a lie from the pit of hell. Those that press towards the mark those that have given their life to the Lord Jesus, to Yeshua HaMashiach, 
that's the Christ in Hebrew those that have decided yes I I'm I'm not strong I've got my failures and I'm but I want to be more like you father he runs towards you with open arms like the prodigal father did to the son don't let them lie to you anymore he wants I'm not making light of God wanting you to obey him he wants you to keep his commandments that's for sure they don't teach you that in the church either in the building I'll say that we are the church the people the brothers and the sisters when we come together we are his body I want to encourage you tonight why do the righteous suffer or those in Christ why do we suffer Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, I ask, Lord, that you would just have your way tonight. That you would encourage those that are weary. Those that want to throw up their hands and say, what is going on here? I don't even care anymore. I don't even, I wish I was dead. I wish I wasn't even in this life because I, I can't stand my life anymore. Father, I ask that you would wrap your arms around them us wrap your arms around us Lord and be an encourager tonight by your Holy Spirit encourage the broken encourage the, the those that are disappointed encourage those that just want to give up encourage us Father God your children are here before you around the world we come before you Father God both in our closet and our prayer time and right here tonight on this program as a part of the body of your body Lord and there's things we need to know father oh father we want to be more like you but we struggle father we want to be more like you but sometimes we fall down and there's people telling us that we don't know you because there's certain things we're still looking at or or dabbling in but meanwhile every one of us here tonight once in their lifetime dabbled in this and that looked at this and that we shouldn't have and little by little you either immediately took it from us or you little by little took it from us so who are we to push anyone to the side that's wanting to be like you father father we thank you that your grace is sufficient we thank you father God that you do say come as you are and when we do by your Holy Spirit as we read your word you start changing us into your image and your likeness we thank you for that father Father, I ask that everyone's ears would be open tonight, that their eyes would be open, that their ears would be unstopped. Father, that your word would go forth, that the ground of our hearts would be broken up, that we would receive this word, and it would be planted on good soil. Father, I love you so much, and I thank you for taking this ex-drug addict, ex-whore, ex-drug dealer, this piece of garbage where people would just throw me to the side and say forget about her thank you father that you looked ahead and you saw tonight I thank you father for the privilege to be able to encourage your children for the privilege to be able to come forth and speak to them that there is hope tonight there is hope tonight and we pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua or Jesus. We thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I can tell that the Holy Spirit of the living God is here tonight. See, Jesus warned us in advance of an approaching tide of suffering, persecution, tribulation, even death. Jesus warned of a certain kind of believer who stumbles and falls when trouble arises. The one whom, as a believer, the seed was sown on rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but is temporary 
And when affliction and persecution arises and they hear the mess going on, accusations going on, that they're no good, they'll never be any good, they allow that persecution to rob that seed. But Father, your word says in Revelations 21, 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. And he will be my son. Do you want to be his son tonight? Do you want to be his daughter tonight? Then let this word go into you. And start renewing your mind by reading the Bible every day. And watch what he starts doing. No, you're not going to become a millionaire. If he, if he does give you money, fantastic. Make sure you help your neighbors that need, okay? We're not going after presidential status. Not that that means anything nowadays with what's going on in the government. We just want to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the one who created everything we see and don't see. With the one who became flesh, Jesus, and died on that cross to give us life. He rose from the grave. The one that's going to come back again very soon. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Psalm 102, 1 says, A prayer of the afflicted, when he is overwhelmed and poureth out his complaint before the Lord, hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call and answer me speedily. See, there was a wall put up between man and God when Adam and Eve messed up royally when they doubted what the Lord told them to touch not the unclean thing and by the the death and resurrection of Christ of Messiah that veil is ripped open and you have access the only thing he asks is for us to repent and then run towards him and renew our mind with his word every day we don't need a man to tell us. We don't need a, a, a preacher. Okay, you don't even need me. You have your Bible. That's all you need. It's good when we get together like this. It's good when we get together and worship and fellowship like this. It encourages us. But what would happen if you couldn't have contact with anyone in the outside world? Do you know how to make contact with the Most High? With Yahweh? our God have you ever been through one of those experiences in life where you just ask why Lord maybe you're going through one right now and know, or know someone that is and it's not that we necessarily doubt the Lord is with us we just can't see the reason for so much trouble I mean I got born again and on 727 1985 at 730 in the morning talk about remembering and immediately after coming to the Lord, our car got repossessed. Kevin, my husband, he got, he got hurt on the job. He fell. He was on a comp, workman's comp. But, you know, the car people don't want to hear that. So they repossessed our car. Tornadoes came through Long Island. A house was destroyed. Then we got evicted. We had a miscarriage. Come to the Lord. He's going to give you everything that's going to make you happy. Uh-uh. Not necessarily. Come to the Lord and have the biggest fight you've ever had. Oh, you'll have some you'll have some times where you can relax in him. Grab them when they're there, let me tell you. Because in this life you will have tribulation. He said so. Jesus told us so. Talk about trouble. I repented of my sins. I was a drug dealer. I was a, 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 a smoker, a, a toker, a popper, pills. I mean, I was, I was a mess. And I should have died on the Northern State Parkway on my, ho on my way back home to Long Island from, from uh, Kew Gardens where I was working. I fell asleep at the wheel. 
I opened my eyes when I heard Patty wake up right before my car hit that wall. And I repented. When I got home, I repented. We need him. We need him more than the air we breathe. We need him more than companionship. We need him. Are you lonely tonight? Do people think you're nuts because you're following the Lord? Oh, you don't need all of that? You know, do you got to be like that? Why does the Lord say you're neither hot nor cold because you're lukewarm? I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. He wants us to be on fire for him. He wants us to love him with every ounce of our being. There are thousands of people that you might be listening tonight. And some of your family might have been beheaded or killed because they won't deny the Lord. I want to encourage you tonight. Press on. Decree and declare his promises. And know that if it comes down to the wire, absent from the body is present with the Lord. You know, sometimes I, I you know, some people might think I'm crazy, but sometimes I, I've seen one or two of those videos. I, I just wanted to look and... I was so amazed, you know, I didn't see the whole thing. I just saw them kneeling down, not screaming, not crying. One of the 21 men, you could see his mouth moving, his lips moving. He was praying. Oh, Lord, if and when that happens to us, let us have your peace, too, that passes all understanding. If and when others mock and ridicule us, let us have your understanding, Father God, that in this life, you will have tribulation. You even went through it. Your apostles went through it, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your encouragement tonight. One of the most disturbing questions for mankind probably has also been, why do the righteous suffer? From the day that Cain slew Abel, this question has been a plague to the human race. And Job was one of the classic examples in the Bible of suffering with no obvious cause. He did not do anything big to deserve it. He didn't do anything little to deserve it. But ultimately, he learned to not be self-righteous from that human standpoint. That was a lot of trouble to learn something like that he went through, I'm telling you. His own wife said, curse God and die. Do you have a spouse that's telling you that? Curse God and die? Rejoice in suffering rejoice. Every trial that God gives us will teach us something, even though it seems hard at that time. We are assured of his promise that it will work for our good if we love him. That's Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This ain't no name it and claim it. Angels go forth and get my stuff and bring it to me. No! According to his purpose. And sometimes we wander off of his path. I know I did. A few years after coming to the Lord, I'm, I messed up royally. The, the worst four months of my life. But let me tell you, I learned my lesson. That was back in 1990. Be quick to repent when you mess up. Be quick to repent. Hebrews 12, 6, for, when the Lord, who, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receives. And if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. That's the word of God. A lot of people do not stop to notice that the Lord chastens every one of his children. Not just the bad ones or the ones they think is bad. If you're going through something like this and are like the rest of us, you know, human beings, you know, a spirit in a human being body, I can't wait to get rid of this human body. I really can't. This body of suffering and persecution and, and sickness. Come quickly, Lord. And if you are going through something like this, I expect you have probably wondered if you've done something to deserve discipline from the Lord. And let me tell you, he does discipline when there's needed discipline. Oh, yes, he will. 
There are other reasons for suffering than just that a person has sinned against God, though. Though that is possible, it's not the only objective God has in mind for allowing suffering, whether physical, mental, or emotional. See, in Psalm 103, 13, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's our Father. If you're truly born again from above, of the Lord, he will not give you more than you can handle. Oh boy, I hate that one because sometimes I feel like I'm getting a lot more than I can handle. Anyone agree with me on that one? Sometimes it's like, okay, you're not giving me more than I can handle. Then what is this on my plate now again or still? Well, he knows just how much we can take. He knows better. He knows us better than we do ourselves. And he will not give more than we can bear. See, he's trying to build us into his image. Have you been crucified on a cross? No. You haven't shed blood. Well, maybe you might have gotten shot or hurt like that. I was involved with a lot of mess back in New York in Ozone Park myself. He protected me many a time. But I'm saying you haven't had them nails put in your hands and feet like the Lord did. God will chasten us as our Father for our good and so that we will become more like Him. More like the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is God in the flesh. God is a spirit, and he that worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God put on humanity. He put on that man skin, okay, and was conceived through the Holy Spirit by the Virgin Mary. You all know that story, and it's not a, a story. It's the truth. It's a biography. It's real. And this is his goal in our life, to conform us into his image and likeness. There's the end purpose of the chastening, whether it's for rebelliousness or whether it's to simply to rub off, rub off the rough edges and straighten up our manners, so to speak. Second Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And let us, let, let this mind be in you, us, which is also in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 2.5. No, I don't have it memorized. I'm reading off of my notepad. I know, I know Brother Nelson memorizes stuff, though, that's for sure. I try to memorize, bro. You got that on me. 1 John 3.2 says, Beloved, now are, the sons, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. It's time to put away the foul mouth. He can do it in you. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't say one sentence without using the F word and a whole bunch of other colorful ones. It was like automatically in my life. It might be bit by bit in yours. I was a liar. I mean, I could tell you something face to face and you would really believe me. I was good at lying. Oh, yeah. That was one of my worst sins. And let me tell you, after a while, it gets to be nature. So when you got to say something, it comes out. And what you do is you stop. This is how I did it, okay? I stopped and I looked at the person I was talking to. I'm, I go, I'm sorry. That was a lie. I, I really didn't do that. And I just want to stop myself right here. Talk about humbling yourself. That'll humble yourself. The Lord will remove. If you allow him to, he'll remove things out of your life. You don't see the Lord shooting dope, do you? You don't see the Lord snorting coke, do you? You don't see the Lord sleeping all over the place, even though some foolish people out there are speaking that he went out with Mary Magdalene. That is horrible. There's some crazy things going on out there. It's time to allow him to purify us. And we do that by the washing of the water of the word. Read that word. Oh my goodness. Read that word. We need his word so much. I need his word. 
And just as our earthly fathers will discipline their children to make them behave the way they want them to, God disciplines us to make us more like him. I think I want to stop here for a moment. And I'm going to put on a song that I picked. Let me see if I can find the one. Uh, this is a good one. It's by Stephen Curtis Chapman. Man, this, this man's testimony is, is amazing. It was a few years back when they were all outside playing. He adopted a few girls from, from foreign countries. And his son was pulling the car out of the driveway and ran his sister over, ran Stephen Curtis Chapman's daughter over, his adopted daughter. This man's been through a lot. That young boy's been through a lot, but the Lord has healed and is using them still. So as you listen to the song, he wrote, this is just one of the songs he wrote as he was going through the time of grief with having to bury his daughter and having to minister to his son. I'll be right back. Be still and know that he is God. God. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll walk you through whatever you're going through in your life right now. But know that all things work together for good to those that love him. Do you love him? Then there's going to be things that are going to happen in your life. Allow the Lord to conform you to his plan for your life. You take a look back at where you've come from. The times where you could have been killed. 
in the places that you were at the wrong time. Times when you could have been arrested, but the Father gave you favor. And then when you sit here and you think about that for just a moment, it blows your mind. You're thinking, Father, you do use the foolish things of this world. And I'll tell you, this girl was one, I was one big fool. I'm 61 or 62, something like that. I'm in my 60s now. And I praise God that I made it to reach my 60s. But it's been, it's been a, a journey of endurance, enduring so many things, sicknesses, the death of loved ones. I slept on park benches before I met the Lord. I remember when I was in college, somebody handed me a Bible and I went to throw it away, but I tucked it in my pocket. I still have that Bible. I still have that little burgundy mini Bible. See, God had a purpose. God has a reason why you are going through whatever you're going through. If you're not serving him, if you're living like a hellhound, I'll just say it like that, like I was, that's the reason he's trying to get your attention. He wants you to repent and then come to him and allow the Lord to help you become more like Christ. No we're never going to be perfect in this human body. So when you do mess up, if you do get angry at that person that cuts you off on the highway, be quick to tell him you're sorry. There's certain things that he'll remove out of our lives as he sees we're ready. I had some anger problem. I still get angry nowadays. I get hurt sometimes very easily. The Lord is allowing certain things to happen in my life to prepare me for what's going to happen in the future. I count it all dung for the gospel of Christ. There are many who went out from us, who left our side that we dearly loved. But the Bible says they went out from us because they were not with us. If they were with us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that he could make manifest who they were. We thank you, Father, for all the things you allow in our life. Think about the cutting and polishing of gems. When a gem's cut and polished, it's like, it's, it's, you know, you, you rub off the cloudy, you, the rough, the ugly outside layers. And sometimes there are flaws on the outside that need to be cut off, right? But some of the cutting and polishing is for no other reason than to make the stone beautiful. As the song says, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. I love this song. I should have pulled it out tonight. I don't have it on my player. But all his wonderful passion and purity. Oh, thou spirit divine. All my nature refine till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. You know, that reminds me of Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. There it is again. Much of the chastening and the rubbing that we get may be attributed to God working in us and desiring to see that inside work brought to the outside so that he might be glorified. You know, when I remember when um, me and my friend Michelle went back to New York, and I went went in front of some of the people that I used to know, <laughs> and they they were wondering, you know, just I hung I went to the bar. Me and her went to the bar, and we hung out. We were preaching in the bar, the Flight One Sixteen Lounge on One Hundred and First Avenue. I don't know if it's still there, but I know we went back. And this one guy pulled a gun on me, 
he, he stuck his hand first in his chest. And I knew he had a piece there, okay? And he goes, really? He goes, what if I pulled a gun out? Where would your God be then? And I took two steps, not one step, closer to him. My nose was about a hair away from his nose. And I told him, no weapon formed against me will prosper. And he pulled his hand out. And he goes, you know, you're nuts. <laughs> and he walked away from me. A few years down the road, that same man, Richard, if you're listening, Richard Gagney, I love you. That same man, okay, down the road, went down to uh, Florida, where I am, looking for the girl that had the guitar with her that was not afraid of him and ran into somebody that I knew at my old church. Wait, this is going back way, way back, way, way, way back, way, 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 way back, okay? And they knew when they described the person they were looking for, they said that they wanted to thank her. They told this to Rich. They wanted to thank her because he repented. His wife came back to him and their marriage is healthy. And their whole family, all their children are serving God. And Richard delivered that when I was up at the altar praying. I had gotten back from that big mess up in my life. This had happened before that previously. And I'm at the altar praying before the service had started. This is when I was still in churches in the building. Asking God, you know, what good came out of this whole thing? I fell. What good came out of this? And Richard wheeled his wheelchair up to me when I was sitting, kneeling down. And he goes, Pat, i got to talk to you. I met this gentleman. And he went through the whole thing I just told you. And I started weeping. Thank you, Father. You might never know the lives that you've touched. But touch a life today. Encourage somebody today with the God of all. He's the God of glory. Encourage someone and let them know you are not alone. You might be going through all of this, but he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's Hebrews 12.10. People will take advantage for their own good, for their own name, for their own titles. But God, Messiah, allows things in our life for his good pleasure so he can make us be more like him don't kick when the Lord allows you to go through some things and he will have you buried a daughter I did she was 23 years old God will allow certain things in our life he will and it is for our good when these things happen I don't want to go into the whole story unless the Lord you know allows me to if you're on Facebook send me a friend request if you know brother Larry ask him what my link is he'll give you the link and you can read it it's in my notes anyone that's listening go to Facebook and just look up the watchman on the wall and you'll see the link and you'll find me there and I'll share in my notes, I'll share all the things that I've gone through. I'm still not out of the woods, still going through things, but I thank the Lord every day. It makes us useful instruments to comfort others. Did you know that? When you've gone through something, I was out one time, you know, just hanging out in Mount Dora and walking around and started talking to these young people, and they said, you know, what do you know? What do you know? You look like you've got it all together there. Have you ever starved? Have you ever had been homeless? And I said, yeah, I was. I was homeless for six months. Didn't have no food. My two youngest children were kidnapped. Didn't know where they were. I'd been through it. And this one girl broke down in tears. And I was able to minister to her because she found a connection that she wasn't alone in all she'd been through. Let me tell you, if she was still homeless, I would have said, hey, Kev, I have somebody that's going to sleep over tonight. This is something that happened in her past. 
I would have brought it home like that. Are you kidding me? Just like somebody did to me. They took me home. They prayed for me. And I believe that's why I came to the Lord. Corinthians and 2 Corinthians 1 3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. We're able to reach those that are going through what we went through. And we're able to say, yes, I understand what you're going through. I walk those steps. Allow God to work those things through you. It is that we might be perfected and established and strengthened and settled. First Peter 5.10, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. It is so that we might have fellowship with our wonderful Savior and attain unto the power of his resurrection. We'll never, in the, in the real life, we'll never really die again. We'll pass over. You know, like I said before, I watched that video and I was blown away by these people about to be beheaded and they didn't flinch. It's almost like Stephen in the Bible when they were stoning him to death. It's amazing. But I do believe that the Lord will remove us when and if that time comes. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the, the people hate this scripture and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. It is that we might be glorified with him and if children, then heirs, Romans 8, 17, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. It's so that we might reign with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, it says in 2 Timothy 2, 12. You show me in the Bible where the apostles had it easy. Jesus himself, Yeshua himself said, I don't even have a place to lay my head. But you got these places, these, not all of them, some of these churches out there, you know, name it and claim it, it's saying you're a little God and commanding money and all this kind of crazy nonsense. Thank the Lord for what you have. And don't run after these crazy nuts, because that's what they are, they're crazy. Consider Jesus, consider Yeshua. He understands about pain, he understands about suffering. And he loves you more than it's possible for our poor, feeble minds to even comprehend. He'll give you the strength to endure hardness as a good soldier in Christ. He'll give you the strength to make it through this life. I want to put on a clip. I was asking the Lord if he wanted me to, and I'm going to. I'm going to put this clip on. Uh, it's by the late, most blessed David Wilkerson. Praise God. No, he didn't have it all together like all of us don't. And I believe that he was removed. That was no accident. Because since he passed away in that car wreck, David Wilkerson of Times Square Church those that took his place have opened up their doors to the Vatican and everything that goes along with it. I want you to listen to his explanation of why do the righteous suffer. It's only about 11-12 minutes long, but it's going to be worth it. Here we go. Now, the purpose of my message tonight 
is to help us understand why the righteous suffer. Now, I'm, this mess is going to make some of you angry. Because you're into a doctrine now that teaches that if you've got a certain quality or quantity of faith, you don't have to suffer. And I'm not mad at you, I'm mad at that damnable doctrine. You can be very, very sure tonight that God has a purpose behind everything you and I suffer. God has a purpose. First of all, let me get right into it. First of all, we should not be surprised when we suffer. The Bible has warned us in advance that the godly in Christ will suffer. The Bible is full of it. The New Testament is full of it. There is a Holy Ghost school of sympathy and it consists of tested saints who have suffered greatly. These are saints of God who have been tested and they've been tossed to and fro. They've been tempted and tried and mistreated. The Bible, in fact, speaks in Philippians 3.10 of a fellowship of his sufferings. Jesus founded this school, by the way. He set it up, the whole curriculum, he established it because he was the one who suffered the most. Jesus suffered mentally, physically, with anguish. He was rejected. He was distrusted. He was abused. He was mocked. He was laughed at. He knew what it was to be lonely, hungry, poor, unloved, shamed. He was slandered. He was called a liar, a fraud, a false prophet. He was humiliated. His own family misunderstood him. His own mother had to ponder things in her heart about him. His most trusted friends lost faith in him when he spoke of his own his power of resurrection. His own disciples forsook him and fled when, they need when he needed them the most. One of them betrayed him. Another denied that he even knew him. And finally they spat upon him, they mocked him, and they murdered him. And the scripture said, God announced beforehand by the mouth of all his prophets that his Christ should suffer. He would be a suffering Savior. And Jesus sympathizes with all of our hurts and sufferings because he went through it all himself. The scripture says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 We have a Savior, the Bible says, that can sympathize with anything we go through because he's been there. The Paul, you know, if you know anything about his life, lived his entire life through suffering. No man outside of Christ has suffered like Paul the Apostle. And the word of his suffering spread all through the church like wildfire. The Judaizing Christians and the Judaizing teachers, they just jumped on that. What they were saying in Paul's gospel is true. It, 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 see, he doesn't believe in circumcision, and that proves that God's not with him because he's suffering. You don't believe Paul's doctrine because you look at his life, he's suffering. If God was really with him, if Jesus was really with him, he wouldn't be suffering. He wouldn't be thrown in jail, he wouldn't be shipwrecked. Well, I've heard, I've heard evangelists, uh, prosperity evangelists, this past few years saying the same thing. If Paul had faith like we have it today, and the world makes we have, he'd never been in jail, he'd never suffered. Now I call that blasphemy. I call it outright blasphemy. He, he, he knew the Judaizing teachers were going around saying, Look at Paul! Don't believe his message because he's a man of pain. He's a man of suffering. God can't be with him. So Paul sent Timothy to the church of Thessalonica with a message. And this is the message that Timothy delivered. He said, Let no man to be, be disturbed by these afflictions. Now Paul was, had just, he'd been stoned. He'd been thrown out of two cities now. They had maligned him. They mocked him. They called him all kinds of names. He was being run out of town. He was, he was being uh, mistreated on all sides. And the word spread everywhere. Look how they're treating Paul. Paul says, let no man be disturbed by these afflictions. His own afflictions, in other words. For you yourself know that we have been destined to this. We have been destined to suffer. It, uh, you can prove that if you don't want to believe what I'm telling you. You can mark down 1 Thessalonians 3, 3 and 4. John 16, 33, Jesus said, In the world ye shall have tribulation. And that word tribulation that Jesus used in Greek is flippus. Flippus, which means anguish, burdens, persecutions, and trouble. The Lord said, In this world you're going to have anguish, burdens, persecution, you're going to have trouble. Jesus also forewarned that in the last days there would be great troubles fall upon all God's people. 
Then they will deliver you to tribulation. And that's the same word. They'll deliver you to burdens and persecution and troubles. And they will kill you. And you will be hated of all nations on account of my name. And those of us who are preaching, they call us, they call us gloom, doom preachers. Make fun. Paul went about warning believers that they would experience deep personal sufferings. Now you are sitting here tonight and you're experiencing deep personal suffering. Hear what Paul said. I'm reading from Acts 14. Don't turn to Acts 14, 22. Paul went about confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, now listen to this, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And secondly, the purpose of suffering is to produce comforters to the body of Christ. To produce comforters to the body of Christ. There's a school of sympathizers who've been tested in the fire. They come out proving God is faithful. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1st chapter, verse 3 beginning. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the faith, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, saying Greek word, which means trouble and anguish, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it's for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. But whether we be comforted, it's for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of all our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Verse 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. In other words, the Lord is saying, I took you through this trial so that you could come forth as a testimony of my faithfulness. You can stand before anyone else and go through the same thing that you went through. And you can say, hold on, brother, hold on, sister. I've been there. God's faithful. Yes. Some that are hearing me right now are doing such great sufferings because you're being chastened by the Lord. The, the, the Lord sees that there's a heart that needs to be broken. He sees a will that needs to be broken. Uh -huh. And I want to tell you, if He's chastening you right now, He's doing it in love. Because whom the Father loves, He chastens. That's right. If you're under the chastening, rod of the Lord is nothing to fear unless you have a stubborn nature. But if you're being chastened by the Lord, the scripture said it's for your profit, and it will afterward produce the peaceable fruit of righteousness if you're trained by it. But if you allow a root of bitterness to spring up, it's going to destroy you and defy you, the scripture says. Alright, now I'm going to try to wrap it up and get right down to the what we call the bottom line here. Get rid of every thought of quitting. I've just hit a nerve. Quitting. Bring into every captivity, every thought of easing off on your total obedience to the Lord. Now listen to me. Here, you, if you don't get this, you won't understand anything I've said tonight. It's not affliction or suffering of itself that teaches us. Because I know many people, many good Christians, who have been destroyed by their sufferings. Mm -hmm. They have been blown away by it. Do you know anybody like that? They gave up. They said, I don't understand it. They see godly people suffer. And they just give up. They quit on the Lord. They say, it doesn't work. And they quit. No. The only way you're trained by suffering, the only way it can work out, the fruit of righteousness in you and in me, it is not suffering, but it's suffering understood. It is affliction that is accepted and not rejected because the hand of God is permitting it. And he's done it for a purpose. But wait, let me give you a good argument for the devil. Next time the devil or any imps of hell come at you and try to accuse you uh, of God being mad at you, of your suffering. Now, there are people who suffer from sin. I, that, that's a whole other message. Some of you under the chastisement of the Lord. Yes, but he does that in love to his children. But next time, here's what you bring. 
to the devil. First of all, Jesus Christ suffered mightily in the flesh and he was perfect. Didn't he suffer? Tell that to the devil. Paul and all our church fathers suffered great afflictions and God loved them dearly, didn't he? And they all suffered, the scripture says. Instead of sufferings and afflictions being a sign of God's displeasure, it's a sign of sonship. The Bible said, where is there a son of mine that I don't chastise? Right. If I'm not chastising him, he's not a son. Instead of letting the devil tell you it's a sign of God's displeasure, it's a sign of sonship. Every affliction is intended for my spiritual benefit and my growth to equip me to sympathize with others who are in need. It's grievous, it's painful, yes, and I cry out of my hurt, but afterward, if I receive it, if I'm trained by it, it's going to bear fruit. I'm going to become more like Jesus. Tell that to the devil. And that's the truth. Next time he throws in your face, well, where is your God? You know, where, where is your God? I thought he would provide for this, that, or the other. I tell you, somebody I know uh, said something like that. It was around November, middle of November, I believe it was. And um, it's somebody that I know. They, there was no food in their house or anything. And um, one of the people in the home started mocking the God of the other person. And before the day was over, people were bringing baskets of food in. Money came in the mail. I'm not kidding you. It wasn't like millions of dollars. It was about 30, 40 bucks here and there. God will prove himself. He'll prove himself. You know, the old saying is, suffering will either make you better or bitter. It's kind of true. Look at Joni Erickson Tata. She had an accident skiing, and she's a quadriparaplegic. No arms, no legs. Oh, it was funny, Elaine, let me tell you. That was funny. God showed. He showed up that day. Um, he was a quadra, she was a quadra, she is a quadriparaplegic, and she draws, she does oil paintings with her mouth, the brush in her mouth. Now, she could have said, forget this, you know, I'm just going to sit here and veg out until I die, what's the use? No, I want to encourage you. I was diagnosed with so many things wrong with me, and believe it or not, I've had people say to me, that's your punishment. Okay, that's my punishment. Whatever. Uh, I, was, I used to smoke Coke. I used to smoke pot. I used to smoke hash. Okay? I used to smoke babanya, heroin. Um, maybe my lungs are bothering me because of that. You know, we do live in a flesh body. Uh, there's certain things that, you know, congestive heart failure, different things, and they can't find that on me anymore. Gee, how about that? Um, things will happen in this human body, and you'll get them naysayers that are saying, that's your punishment. God is punishing you. Where is your faith? Just, just blow them a kiss and walk away. Don't even say nothing. Realize, realize that all things work together for good. All things, not some things. We live in a human body. We live in this flesh house. What we've done before, you know, I used to have people say, well, you can just turn that around. God, make me the way I was before. You know, I, you know you're living in a flesh body. You've messed it up. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a messed up body. Now, the Lord allows us. Sometimes when you're sick, the Lord will allow you to come out and and preach his gospel, even if you have a fever or something. God has done that. I know that for a fact. Things happen in the, your human body. So stop kicking and punching and wondering. Now, once again, like David Wilkerson said, I'll say it again. If you're under, if, um, say you've lost your finances, you've lost friends, you know, you've lost things in your life, say all them things are going on. And you were warned, let's say in a dream, and you didn't want to listen, be careful. The Lord loves you enough to try to show you what's going to happen if you don't start getting serious with Him. You can't, you can't mix, you know, you can't mix good and evil together. 
you can't, you know, party, party and go to um, country hoedowns and then say praise the Lord. Yeah, you can't be involved with all this mess up worldly stuff and still think you're serving the Lord. You're, you're crazy if you do. Your desires should change. Your, your heart towards certain things will repel you. You'll want to be you want to be closer with the Lord. You want to do things that include him and other people that love him too. But you can't be living like the devil and, and claim Christ. You know, I, I, I'm thankful that I know some people, and I was one of them, like I said, those four months. I knew I wasn't serving the Lord those four months. I wasn't trying to lie to anybody. Make up your mind. You're either hot or cold. The Lord will chasten you if you get lukewarm. He don't want you getting cold. Father God, we come to you. B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus right now. And we thank you, Father God, that you love us so much that you allow certain things in our lives. Trying to change us into your image. We say uncle. We say uncle. We say Jesus. Help us. We go before you right now, Father, repenting of our sins. You already know what we've done. You already know the mess that you're involved with right now. You already know the mess that they're involved with. You, you know what we've done in our lives. You know what we're doing right now. You know what our thoughts are right now. Father, we lay those, those sins, those things that we know to be sin, at the cross right now. We ask that you forgive us. We ask that you would help us walk more uprightly before you, Lord. Change us, Father. Change us into your image. And we know when we say this prayer, we know heck's going to break loose and we might go through some trials. But we love you enough, like you loved us enough to give your life for us. And Father, you rose from that grave. You rose from that tomb, Lord God, and you're coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle or blemish. You're coming back to see if righteousness is in the earth. Minute by minute, Father, help us walk up right before you. If and when we mess up, Father, let us be quickly to run to you again and confess our fault. And then to make up our mind to not do it again. Help us, Father. We want to be like you, Father. Help us, Father. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. B'Shem Yeshua. The Lord is faithful, beloved. If your heart has a heart after God. Allow him to conform you. Don't listen to those preachers out there that are saying you're supposed to be rich and famous and wealthy and healthy. And Look at what the Bible said tonight. We went through the word of God. Realize that and take a step of faith. And Don't look back. Don't look back at where you were. Or what you were doing. Use your testimony of what you did to glorify God because you're not doing it anymore. I love you so much. I really do. I know that Brother Larry loves you so much. Everyone involved with this station loves you to life. And we want to see. We want to see you worshiping the Lord in the beauty of his holiness and serving the Lord no matter what it might cost you including your life fear not press press it's a press it's a press but great is his faithfulness I'm going to put on the last song of the night 
And me and brother Larry Davenport will be back here Friday night. Lord willing. Shalom. If you need me, the watchman on the wall at gmail.com. Email me or message me on Facebook. I'm available. I will talk with you. I love you. Good night.